What's up guys, my name is Cody. I wanna welcome you to our channel. And in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at some Mutt 16 salary cap rank gameplay. Um, I've been having some trouble with my videos, so I was hoping to uh, try to test some things out, talk to you a little bit about what's going on with me, uh, changed up the lineup a little bit, and kind of uh, try, started to transition. I wanted to try um, some of the things, some different things out. Uh, this week, I'm working with, uh, kind of trying to see if my quarterback does matter. So I'm using uh, the Road to the Playoffs edition of Tom Brady. And we're going to see uh, kind of how things go uh, with him. Uh, starting off, we're having a little trouble getting our, our roster set up. Uh, so we're going to have to burn a timeout um, because we weren't able to get that done uh, in the depth chart because we had to finagle some things around to get all the right players. Uh, I've actually found uh, something out a little bit new, and that is my the way that I've been running my my scheme, I found that I don't know that zone coverage really matters anymore. Uh, I'm not quite 100% sure on that. Uh, we're trying some things out, but I went with a mainly man-to-man -man coverage style of a lineup. And uh, we're going to see how that works out. Also, white receivers, uh, we're trying to get a little bit faster receivers on the field. Uh, we still want that threshold of 96 route running. So I've actually tried to grab uh, a couple of different receivers. Uh, I've got the all rookie team, Amari Cooper, and then I think I have a couple of different ones out there. So we're just trying some things out, uh, kind of experimenting a little bit to see how it works. Uh, the, the the guys have been really, really good in my opinion. Uh, the speed guys. So I've got this William Jackson, the third NFL draft, and he's got 98 speed. So he's gonna be the blitzer on the nickel three through five. And then I've also got the ultimate legend, uh, Javon Curse. He's got 101 acceleration. Uh, so we're trying him out as well uh, to see how he does in the pressure. Uh, from that other edge when we blitz off that right side. And then we also have, uh, like I said, we went heavy man-to-man. -man, but again, we kind of decided that I want the threshold of that 90, um, I want the threshold of that 95-man coverage. If they don't have the 95-man coverage, I really don't value them. Um, so we're just trying some things out, trying to see how that works out. Um, if they have like 94-man coverage, I just disregard them. They're not even in my radar. I don't think they're very good. So we got to go with like trying to get 96 man on every single player. And I think we've got that. And so it's actually played really, really effectively. I haven't, you know, I, I haven't had a whole lot of issues with my corners, um, you know, kind of keeping that in mindset. Because the idea is, again, if the opponent has someone with 96 route running, he's going to get those good crisp cuts. And then if I have a corner with 97 man coverage, it's not going to really, I haven't seen much of an effect, but if I have that corner with 96 man coverage, it's the same kind of coverage. You get the same coverage. In my opinion, uh, that's just what I've seen. Uh, so that's what we're going with. On offense, I've um, actually changed some things up. Uh, still going with my strong offensive line. I still think that's uh, important. I've actually come back to the Rams playbook. I was running the Bengals playbook for a while, uh, but now I'm coming back over to the Rams book to try to continue to work on the shotgun bunch week. Uh, but, anyways, uh, you know, just kind of trying some things out, trying to see. I'm starting uh, Tony Gonzalez at tight end. I don't know if I was doing that in my last video. The reason I'm starting Tony Gonzalez at tight end instead of Stanley Havili is because Tony Gonzalez has 99 route running. He's the only uh, he is the only tight end in the game that has 96 or higher route running, and so that's a big deal because if we if you know we're considering route running important, but only if you have that 96 threshold. Um, and I, I found that to be kind of a pretty effective uh, strategy. Uh, to go with and then I'm going with this Tom Brady just kind of trying some new things out uh, trying to see we're just constantly learning and, and, and we're just trying that out uh, we've got Tyler Boyd and Antonio Brown they've got uh, 96 plus route running and then they have some good catch in traffic and then we have uh, Amari Cooper so that's what we're going to do uh, and then I've got this other running back uh, Trey Williams and he is kind of like my toss running back he's about 15 cap value uh, but what's really good about him and crap, I forgot to put Tony Gonzalez on an out route. But what's really good about Trey Williams is that he has a 90 speed. I think he has about 92, something like that. 90 speed, 91 acceleration. And then he also has a 90, I think 92 juke move. So he's a really good running back for my system because those are kind of the, the three big values. And then everything else we can kind of get away with. So... Uh, here on third and fourth down, we're going to go ahead and convert that, get the ball up to Antonio Brown, uh, and move up field. Uh, but again, you know, just trying some things out. 
Uh, so one of the things I wanted to talk about today was the Madden Challenge. Uh, the Madden Challenge was going on, or the Madden Championships uh, were going on this week. And just wanted to kind of get your thoughts. I really uh, thought Problem's offensive scheme uh, was rather interesting. Uh, just because I didn't expect him to run that offensive scheme, to be quite honest. Uh, I thought we were going to see a couple of other things. Uh, Spot Me Please, I think, stole the show. Uh, I think his offense was very effective. Um you know, so it'll be interesting to see how he does going forward uh, going forward in the next game. Uh, Sirius Mo was pretty good. Uh, I didn't like him switching to the nickel 2-4-5. I, I really didn't like some of the defenses I saw. I didn't think they were that effective. Uh, the one defense that I think was really, really effective was what we've been teaching. Um, and I found out from another person that um, I think Dean Money posted a video and, uh, but anyway, in that video, D Money posted this video and it explained how to run this defense. It's the Dime 146 A gap uh, pressure that we showed. And I think we showed it a couple, maybe a couple weeks after D Money did. And I know I got some, some players that, you know, reminded me very quickly that I didn't originally come up with that. And again, I'm not trying to get into that stuff. I mean, it is what it is. This game is very, very hard to be original. Uh, and a lot of the concepts carry over from formation to formation. So you can find something and it's not always going to be. Your, you know, your discovery. I mean, that was a stupid, stupid animation. I'm having a lot of trouble with my connection lately, and so it's been kind of a grind to get a game in. I haven't, I haven't played a whole lot in the last week just because of, because of like I just said. I mean, trying to get my game fixed up. But in this situation, he's running uh, a lot of cover three, um, and so what we're trying to do here. Here he goes to cover one, so we're going to hit. Uh, and that was Trey Williams right there matched up against uh, Charles Woodson. So, you know, I mean, again, route running is important. It's not everything. Um, it's, in my opinion, that 96 threshold is. Trey Williams does not have 96 route running. It's so right there. It was just kind of a read. But, anyway, that's what we've been kind of working with. Uh, I find a lot of salary. The one issue with salary cap for me is that you get your team gets so tired? Like, they I think it's because they're trying to, you know, make sure that you don't go no huddle. But what I'm finding is that my team just gets really tired, even if I don't go no huddle. So I'm not quite sure, but I know Problem was talking a little bit about that um, in his game against uh, Piano. I think was his name. So anyway, uh, but one of the things I do want to talk about with Madden Challenge is you know why watch it why would you watch the game because you know what everyone's going to run i think the cool part about the madden challenge is always to see how you got uh, guys like problem who run very simple offense i mean it's just straight fullback dives fullback dives fullback dives mixed in with some inside zones and then um you know post corner routes and things like that which is pretty much you know i mean that's really really that's all it's all i've seen him run so far this season so uh inside zone fullback dive toss and then a couple of other little things here and there but those are the main things. And then he uses the flooding concept that we all use from every, from several different formations. And what's interesting about Problem is that he still is able to go up against these really top players and still be able to be effective. And I think that's why it goes all the way back to execution uh, is the king of this game. You know, can you execute under pressure, and can you get that fourth and inches? And the game that Problem did lose, uh, he wasn't able to execute his fullback dive, uh, unfortunately. And the guy got to stop against it. So, you know, it just goes to show that sometimes the best even can't always execute. And here we give up a big run that Javon Curse is going to save us. We're using the speed version of Javon Curse. He's, uh, I think he's like 28 cap value, which is pretty good for me because uh, he's kind of the main player on my defense. And for him to only be 22 cap value, we are having some freaking connections issues. Though. I don't know what's going on. Auto motion is probably going to be PA. Nope. Power O, interesting. But, yeah, so uh, with my team, with my lineup, real quick, uh, the main thing that I've kind of tried to do is just find players that work for me uh, and then go from there. So I'm using, I'm user controlling this guy, Lonnie Ballantyne. I don't know if you guys know who this guy is. The cool part about Lonnie Ballantyne is that he's only 10 cap value. He's very similar to, uh, in my opinion, he's very similar to Calvin Johnson. Um, he's not as good. Uh, I don't think, but he is very similar, and he does a really good job for me. Now, again, some people would rather use her Anthony Barr or whoever, but 
you know, for me, I like this guy. I know uh, Spot Me Please was using Ryan Shazier, but again, those guys were running a lot of double loop three blitzes, and so they were using their linebackers. So again, I run this this nickel three through five odd, so I have to use her. I have to use her this uh, this safety right here in the middle of the field. Go with quick slants. Oh my gosh, flat route guys. That's so annoying. I have someone in the flats and they throw to the flats. Um, okay, so one of the other things I wanted to do is I wanted to talk about um, kind of what we're going to do with the YouTube channel coming forward. So what we really want to do is try to get videos that help you guys. So I'm trying to find a way to make really useful content uh, that is helpful. And I mean, always suggestions always help. So if you guys have any things that you anything that you would like me to do uh, if you would leave that in the comments I can't promise that I'm gonna do your you know exactly what you want I may do a different version I may not even do anything with it um, what I'm, my goal is to try to reach the most people uh, to try to help the most people with the game now again I don't claim to be the perfect player I know full and well that I'm actually not very good uh, but I do like to play and I like to talk about the game I think I have a pretty decent perspective on like how to make a good play um, I'm not always the best at executing that's why you know that that's why I lose games oftentimes it's really has nothing to do with my scheme it's that I can't execute one thing that's interesting two guys to check out maybe uh, is this Sean Taylor I don't know if you guys are familiar with Sean Taylor but basically uh, I think it's a speed edition but problem was problem and serious mode both were using him or they weren't using him but they were using him on their kickoff team and he looked like he did a really really good job for their their offense so See here, cover three. Let me get that back to Antonio Brown. So right here, just a little game planning. So it's like 159 left. Uh, this play Rams dig is actually really, really good. It's kind of a concept we've been talking about all season. Um, you saw, I think Spot Me Please use this. I know you saw Young Kiv use this. But basically just high pass lead it to Tony Gonzalez. And he'll like go up for it. Obviously we, didn't, we weren't able to execute there. Um, but anyway, I respect what I was saying. So like two minutes right there. I mean, I shouldn't have passed it. I just wanted to show you guys. Um, but what you want to do is you want to kind of take their timeouts with them. You're playing possessions. You're not playing for, you know, scoreboard or whatever. Like my job right now is to play for possessions. So that's why you'll see me. Um, you know, I'm kind of content right now with the field goal. The field goal is fine for me um, because a field goal puts me up one possession. Right now, we're, he's up one possession, but a field goal will put me up one possession. That's why I go for two as well, uh, to get up a possession. Okay, so so just some thoughts um, as you guys kind of look for how you're going to go about playing this game. Brady's going to get my man Trey Williams involved. Yeah, so see, so now we got a first and goal. He's got three timeouts, but he's going to get the ball back, and ideally, he's not going to have a ton of time. Uh, a ton of time with the ball. That's the goal here. All right, so. Oh, whoops, we threw it in completion. So see. And that's kind of why you want to really try to run the ball a lot more. I'm just kind of flirting a little bit with that little hitch route concept that I saw bringing this weekend. Uh, okay, so right here. So what you want to do with your iPhone tie, and this is interesting, is you want to use motion when you come down to running formations like this. It's important to use motion um, because it makes your offense much more effective uh, because you can use motion to set up different passing principles. Uh, and with a you know really heavy run formation is what we're going to really try to establish out of this. That motion allows us to do a lot of things. So right here, he, he's not going to go ahead and take a timeout. So we're just going to come back out and run the ball again and take a field goal and go into half. Um, you know, in my opinion, that's how I play it. You know, not everybody's going to play it like that, but this is this is I mean, that's how I would play it. Because again, you're getting that possess that one possession advantage. Um, you know, if we get a field goal, that's great, but. Or if we get a touchdown, it's great, but, you know, probably not going to. What I like to do, though, is I like to come out. So I'll come out and give a look that I'm going to go for it because then I can just take that delay a game penalty anyway. 
you know, but I might as well at least get a look. Like if he comes out in just like a field goal block or something, then I can easily quick snap throw and go. Um, you know, but that's that's kind of how I play it. Uh, again, not, see like right here, so he's in goal line. So this is very easy for me. I'm going to immediately go for this because he's not in a defense that's set up to stop this. Uh, you know, I can get a quick little out route to Antonio Brown, get in for six. But again, and that's why I do that because sometimes guys, you know, sometimes they don't, uh, you know, sometimes they hesitate. Now, again, that's probably more of an off or an online thing than an offline thing. But, you know, I mean, if you can if you can sneak one of those in a game, it is, it is pretty powerful. Um, so, you know, so that's kind of how I would play that. And, again, you know, you guys can do what you want, but that's what I would recommend you do. Uh, one of the things, too, is that, again, we're using motion. He's used to this motion snap of Cooper in the A-gap. Now we're going to swing him outside, run a little quick halfback pitch. Stanley going to really going to beat him to the outside, but he doesn't get his doesn't get his shoulder inbounds, unfortunately. But again, that's kind of the thought process. Now, see, we get the ball, and this go back to the field goal real quick. So, like, say for example, we took a field goal. This is really important to consider because this is why I talk about possessions all the time. You, you, you're playing a, a battle of possessions, especially because of the clock is so small. But um, but anyway, real quick. So, if we were winning, so if we were winning like nine to seven right now, right? So we were up one possession. And then we come out and say we go down and we get in a fourth down situation again. Well, then I would probably go for it because then I'm thinking touchdown because then a touchdown is going to put me up by two possessions. Um, you know, but just just kind of some of those things that you guys have to think through as you're playing this game. Uh, but anywho, that's how I play it. Not everybody does that. Um, but like right here, so and you can't take sacks in this game. I don't know why. I, I take way too many sacks, but... Um, uh, okay, so to go real quick off that point, though, so like right here, we got about three minutes left in the third quarter, and this is what I, I think is the most underrated part of Madden is like the chess match that you have to play, uh, you know, throughout it to get a, you know, to get a good win. But, um, oh, dang it, dang it, I almost threw an interception. Okay, so, so go back to game planning real quick. So I... You got about three minutes left, so you're thinking ideally he's probably going to have, you know, a couple more, a couple more possessions at the ball. Um, you know, so again, obviously you don't want to turn the ball over. You want to play kind of safe here. Uh, we're going to go to the inside zone, see if we can pick it up, make it a manageable fourth down because we know we're going to go for it. Um, the reason we're going to go for it is because of the time on the clock. Okay, so and he's been running similar things defensively for the majority of the game. So I'm thinking we can probably hit this route to Brown. Possession catch that. Um, that. That goes back to like knowing your opponent, kind of filling him out. Even when he comes out and running plays and things, we're able to kind of get a, at least a read on what he's doing. He's been showing cover three all game. He hasn't adjusted to that corner flat street combo at all yet. So, um, you know, that's an important thing to, to think about. Another thing to think about, too, um, is something like this situation. So we're going to swing Havili out. Because uh, he's probably shown a little blitz look. Yep, he goes cover zero blitz. We're able to get Havili one on one against a safety. Um, you know, but real quick, go back to game planning for just a, a quick moment. The reason we went for that is because of the possession battle. Again, um, you know, we're only up by one possession, and if he stops us, we're still only up by one possession. We're not getting any better. So, like right here, it's vital. You know, like I'm gonna this. I'm, it's four down territory right here. Uh, to score a touchdown. That's why I'm okay with you know maybe checking down to a quick run just to show it to him, let him see that we are willing to run the ball from this formation. Uh, but now I can you know maybe maybe quick snap a four vertical play um, right here, catch him in a bad defense, and we end up screwing up and throwing the ball into the ground. But that's kind of some of the things that I think is important to think through and strategize about. Um, you know you have your scheme and that's important, but again, you know. It's not it. That's not the only thing you have to worry about. You have to worry about your, um, I mean, you really do have to worry a lot about your, uh, how you're going to combat certain things uh, that come up. So, like right here, we're going to run. Uh, now we may get a delay game here. We're just going to check out to the flat. That's fine. So, we knew it was four down territory. I didn't like that read. I spent way too much time screwing around. I audible to the wrong play right there. But anyway, so like right here, this is for, because if I say, for example, I take a field goal, it's seven, to, it's, it comes 15 to seven, which means 
he can tie the game. It's only it's a, only a one possession game at that point. So you know, this is where we're very intentional about going for it right here, trying to make a play. Get the crossing pattern. Mario Cooper, can he fight for the end zone? And he can't. Now he's got a very long drive here, so let's see if we can't. Uh, maybe throw him off. We're going to obviously bring the house uh, defensively. So I'm really, really, really watching out for these quick slants. And there we go. There's some pressure. Again, it's, you know, not everybody plays like that. And, you know, I didn't really execute very well on the goal line. I should have ran the ball at least two or three times. And I shouldn't have ran that halfback sweep. I should have ran an inside zone. But, yeah, I mean, you know. Part of this is I'm having trying to kind of learn this bunch as well, but I don't, I'm not trying to make excuses. I'm just trying to tell you, the, trying to kind of learn the bunch some, and and really kind of execute that bunch offense, and start to learn the reads more so than anything. Oh my gosh, it's such a terrible, such a terrible penalty by me right there. But yeah, it's kind of what you want to do, and then again, it's like right now defensively we've got. We want to make sure that he scores with about two minutes left on the clock. Uh, if that happens, then that's definitely an, uh, a good win for the defense. Having a lot of trouble with the offsides crap. Crap, we broke another run. 3 through 5 is not, I mean, it's a good defense, but sometimes against the run you can get burned. I mean, I'm sure if you guys watch any of my content, you know, and that's why we have other formations we can go to if we really need to stop the run. You will not see me in 3 3 5 odd. You'll see me in 4 3 under, or you'll see me in 3 4 solid. But I'm trying to kind of stay balanced here. And we got a one on one. Oh, I should have intercepted that. I should have been holding triangle. So that's a quick tip there. I mean, you know, when you're going to the ball, always hold triangle because if they tip it up in the air, then you at least are going to get an animation. Um, so right there, that was a big mistake on my part. It's going to cost me too. We're going to run a little roll coverage. Runs his little play. There's my guy Williams coming off. He doesn't make the tackle. We need to make a tackle there, but we don't. That's a big score for him. So see here, him going for two. The reason he's going for two is to make it a field goal game. Um, and we should get him, yep. So see now, off like right now, guys, we're in a really, really good position. If we're just playing to win the game, this is where you score with zero seconds on the clock. I mean, we're not coming out trying to do anything crazy. Um, you know, we're thinking field goal last minute. I mean, that's really it. Um, you know, if you get a big play like a kick return or something, or a, or they come out in a cover zero, then that's fine. But you don't want to force anything. This is this is a really big drive for us. This is a big point here. The reason you don't want to force the thing is because you have nothing to lose. Right now we're in the driver's seat because we win the possession battle because we have the ball and we're losing by one possession, which we're going to be able to go down and get a field goal. That was very safe offense right now. No turnovers is important. But it's, and again, you know, we're also going to use clock. Um, it's like right here we're going to take it down to the fourth quarter because, again, we're just trying to get a field goal, get out of there with a W. I mean, if your goal is to win games, this is how you do it. This is part of how you do it, I think. And, uh, you know, this is this is, this is is how you kind of strategize and game plan. I mean, this is how you win games you probably shouldn't always win. When you play games like this, a lot of times you'll actually win games that you probably should lose. Um, the guy's probably better than you, but because you're smarter, you're, you're game planning and you're doing all that stuff, you know, it makes it a little easier on you uh, to be able to be effective. It's like right here, he's... And check down to an inside zone, get the clock going. Nothing too crazy. I'm not a very good running player this season. I'm not anywhere near as good as problem than those guys are. But, but uh, you know, I, I do know the effectiveness of the inside zone, and I'll utilize it occasionally. Like right here, he's showing a cover zero look. Uh, so what we're going to do, we're going to try to get the ball out of our hands quick. See, so here he goes off sides. That gives us a free play. We'll end up taking a shot here and go up to Tyler Boyd. He was one-on-one. -on -one. You know, again, it's one of those things. It's like that same thing with the kick return. If he's going to give us a big play like that, you know, we have to be okay with taking it. But that comes with the presupposition that, again, now we're going to have to go on defense, and our strategy is going to change 
because of the clock because we're sitting at 324 you know and right now we're going to try to go up seven points um, and my guy Stanley Havili is going to help us do that but, but for example guys like right here so we are in a really good position but he's also in a decent position because he's going to get the ball back his offense is on the field the idea here is if, he, if he's going to score it's going to be off of a big play we're not going to give up little drives, little dinks and dunks. We're going to be very aggressive on defense right here. If he gets a big play, he's probably going to score a touchdown. What that's going to do, though, is it's going to give us that ball with about two minutes left in all of our timeouts instead of you know him scoring at the last second, going into overtime, and then him getting the ball. And, again, that's how I play it. It's not how everybody does. I, you know, I'm not the same uh, as everybody else is. But, again, that's how I would play this. That's how I would play this situation. Um, is to take very, 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 um, you know, try to see like right here. So he gets a big play here. That's fine. Now it's even more imperative right now that we really kind of shut him down in the red zone. But you would rather have that red zone stand with two minutes or so for your offense than with no time at all for your offense, and then you go off sides. So like right here, we're back. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna be very very aggressive, heavy blitzing style defense for the majority of this drive. Um, you know, we're not gonna give him a ton of time in the pocket and we're also our zone defense is going to be very very aggressive so here we here we kind of get him out of field goal range now here this is where the defense starts to kind of really this is where it all comes together in this situation because in this situation he's faced with a very difficult um, task he has a third and 21 he's got two downs to get 21 yards or we win you know, so the defense is going to be very simple here. I've got the running back. He's my responsibility. If he, you know, if he goes out on a route, that's fine. If he doesn't, then I'm going to use her. Uh, we shade the outside coverage, and I'll give up that running back route. But he was probably going to go up top. There we get the interception with our good corners, Dominic Rogers, Camardi, let up an aggressive catch before comes back, gets an interception, and now offensively we can really uh, kind of kind of seal the game. So again, guys, this is a little bit of game planning how you would do it. This is how. I would do it. You know, again, I'm not the best player in the world. I don't claim to be, and I don't try to be. I just try to be as good as I can be, and I try to help guys along the way, and that's all we're, all we're about here. Um, as I throw the interception, oh, that was so stupid. I did not think he was going to be able to get out there on that route. Man, that was dumb. So now we're going to have to turn around and do the right thing, or do the same thing. So same kind of style defense here. Uh, we're just trying to be very aggressive. Um, let's see, stick, I get the pressure in, there comes Jackson off that edge, flying in, I can't believe I threw that interception, so here we're going to go cover two, because he's in a compressed look, so good chance this is like post route, nope, it's bench, that's fine, so now we get him down here, now this is where we use our timeouts, because we're going we're gonna to try to hedge our bet a little bit here, get us some clock, uh, to work with when we get the ball back it's very important that we have as much time as we can to maybe get down and get a field goal uh, or something um, you know that's really really important so here he goes halfback base that's fine and he gets him down to the two yard line we're probably going to get fullback dive oh as buck sweep you went uh, we're probably going to get fullback dive we got fullback dive last time he was in the in the red zone so oh no it looks like it's single back ace Halfback zone weak. We're in the backfield there. Again, we call a timeout. Now, in this situation, he's probably going to have to throw the ball twice. Um, and that's going to be a good use of our timeouts, in my opinion. Um, but anyway. So right here, the only thing I'm really worried about is a quick crossing pattern. Goes to the flats. We're able to get our guy out there. We had him in cover, too. Uh, we we kind of hot routed everybody to flat zones on that. So now here we got him in another situation. Fourth down and goal. He has to throw the ball. And there we go. And there's the stop. And so we can easily a couple pullback dives here and we'll wrap the game up. Uh, but again, guys, you know, I mean, we made, uh, made several mistakes. I mean, that clock management right there at the bottom, you know, when I got the turnover was actually very, very poor. Uh, but, you know, we were able to come back defensively, make a really, really good adjustments and, and kind of hold him down a little bit uh, with that philosophy, again, of giving up the big play. You know, if he's going to score, we don't want to make – we don't want to give him a touchdown necessarily in that situation. But 
you know, we, we want to be aggressive. We want to be very aggressive, be willing to give up the big play. That's fine, you know, as long as we get the ball back with some time. And see, even if he would have scored on that fourth down, it would probably been 20 to 20. We would have had about a minute and a half uh, to get up and down the field, maybe make a play or two. Uh, so that's why we did what we did there. And hopefully you guys can, uh, hopefully it was you know beneficial for you guys to kind of see all that play out. And again, he's got his timeouts. Uh, so there he uses one of them, and that's interesting that he didn't use them beforehand. You know, so we have to know that as well. He has his timeout. So like right here, it's important that we, you know, get this first down. This is probably the biggest play of the game right here. Fortunately, we don't have our player in. That is normally what we want on this play. Send Trey Williams in motion. He's been going in motion all game. And we've got this nice slant route to Tony Gonzalez, 99 route running over the middle. Now he's going to have to start using his timeouts. Let's see, and there we go. So, uh, but anyways, guys, that I just kind of wanted to get on the mic and share and kind of test the audio out. I want to see uh, if you guys would do me a favor and let me know in the comments how the audio experience was for you, uh, how the video quality was. Really appreciate it. I'm trying to make it better for you guys. I'm doing the best I can. Uh, like I said, you know, I've just kind of had a lot of issues with my equipment lately. Um, it's not really anything that I really intended to happen. It just kind of happened. Um, so just wanted to let you guys know that. But anyways, guys, I'm looking forward to you know sharing some more of my tips for salary cap rank. I feel like it's one of the best game modes they've ever created. It's by far my favorite game mode I've ever played in Madden uh, because you're able to kind of get a combination of mutt and um, you know draft champions, I guess, because you don't have overpowered teams. Um, and so I really appreciate that from them on their behalf um, because I'm able to take my kind of standard roster into a game and not feel like I'm going to get just, you know, rocked, you know, no matter what. So, but, uh, but anyways, guys, just wanted to thank you guys for watching today's content. I really hope it was beneficial. I hope some of the things that I said about the Madden Championship was good. Uh, also, guys, hope you would let me know, you know, how you guys enjoyed the Madden Championships and some of those things. If you guys do not know about that, I'll leave some links in this video that will tell you a little bit more, give you a little bit more information about that. Uh, but other than that, guys, that's, that's pretty much what I've got for you this week. So I just wanted to kind of share this video with you. Again, let me know how the quality was. Again, I am working so hard on this. I'm trying to bring you guys good quality videos. Um, but also, really, I'm just at the end of the day trying to help you guys um, in any way that I can. So let me know if you guys have any questions. Other than that, guys, really appreciate you guys watching today's video. And we will see you guys tomorrow.